Welcome to Parkbench Tutors. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, you can find us at parkbenchtutors.com or look us up on Facebook. In this final podcast, we are going to look at the basic maths which will be needed for this course and which you are going to need if you p- go on to pursue other courses with the AAT series or Accounting Technician series. So, what do we need to know? Well, there are several actions that we need to be able to perform. The most obvious are, of course, addition and subtraction, which you must also be able to understand decimals and to be able to multiply and divide by decimals. You need to be able to calculate ratios, which are widely used in accounting, and to calculate percentages. And you need to be able to do fractions, and you need to understand averages. Right, let's deal with these one at a time. I'm not going to do with, deal with basic addition and subtraction, but let's start, for example, by dealing with ratios. What do we mean by a ratio? It's the amount of one number in relation to another number or symbols, and we present the results using the colon symbol in punctuation. So, here we go. Bodget and Scarpa, building repairers. You probably all used that firm once or twice in your lives, and probably not going to use it again, right? So, Bodget and Scarpa have the following figures for trading in 2012. We've got their sales, their cost of sales, and their expenses. So, we're going to determine the ratio of sales to cost of sales. We've got the figures there, 250,000 and 100,000. And we're going to determine the ratio of sales to expenses. We have sales there, 100,000. We have expenses at 50,000. And then we are going to determine the ratio of gross profit to net profit. Note there's nothing there at the moment, so we're going to have to determine what gross profit and net profit are. Okay, let's start by doing the simple bit. Gross profit is sales less cost of sales. So here's a bit of subtraction for you. 250,000 minus 100,000 gives 150,000 and a bit more. Gross profit less expenses is net profit, so 150,000 less 50,000 is equal to 100,000. Fine. So sales to cost of sales. We divide the sales by the cost of sales, divide 250,000 by 100,000. There we are. And we get 2.5. So how are we going to express this? Well, what it means is that for every £2.50 earned as sales income, there was £1 incurred as cost of sales. So our ratio is 2.5 to 1. And you can see we write it with the colon sign between. So if you were doing the other ones, we said that sales to cost of sales is 2.5 to 1. Sales to expenses comes out as 5 to 1. And gross profit to net profit, 1.5 to 1. Now we'll go on to percentage, which is simply a method of expressing a number out of 100. We often use this to make comparisons and for financial analyses. You will also find that they are used to calculate discounts, and we have podcasts on discounts for you. And they are used to calculate taxes such as VAT and income tax. Currently VAT stands at some 20% in this country. So here we are, Precious Footing is the treasurer of a hang gliding club and has been asked to present figures for the percentage of each asset at the next meeting of members. So here are the figures that she's going to be working with. She has the value of each type of asset and she needs to know what percentage of total assets these are. Pretty obviously the first thing we've got to do is determine what the figure is for total assets which comes to 14.7745. There we are. Now, let's carry on and do the cash part. So, we have cash of 2674 out of total assets of 147.745. It comes to 2%. How did I get that? Well, I took the amount of cash and I divided by the total assets. 2674 divided by 147745 and then I multiplied my answer by 100 and just for convenience for this exercise I am adjusting the answers to the nearest whole number so for accounts receivable which work out at 1% of total assets I did the same thing I carried out the same steps divided the total for accounts receivable by total assets and multiplied my answer by 100 
and I gave the answer to the nearest whole number. Similarly, I can do the same thing for equipment and for the clubhouse. And there we are, there's my completed task. I've done something else at the bottom. I've checked it by adding the percentages because that should equal 100. Now let's look at discounts for customers. Slightly more complex one this time. The amount that can be deducted from the usual total is a discount. So I have four customers and I've got the amount purchased. And the discount is only going to apply if they purchase more than £50 worth. And if they do purchase more than £50, they're getting a 4% discount. So I have to determine the amounts to be paid by each customer. Well, first of all, you can see that only three of the customers qualify for a discount. Eva Chewin does not, so I do 4% of the others. And then to get the invoice amount, what I do is subtract that. So there we are, I subtract in the first case 2.54 from 63.45, I get 60.91 and so on for the other customers. Right? Fractions. Fractions are parts of whole numbers. Here's a typical fraction. What's this part? It's called the numerator. And this part is the denominator. So, given the following information about customers taking up vouchers, determine the actual number of people who presented vouchers. OK, so here we have customers in store and the fraction of customers using vouchers. So at Burnley there were 1421 customers, three-sevenths of whom used vouchers. That works out as 609 customers. How did I do that? Well, I divided 1421 by 7 and then multiplied by 3. You can figure out here I've divided 750 by 3 and multiplied by 2. And at Nelson I've divided 1265 by 5 and multiplied by 1. And at Colne, I divided 1460 by 20 and multiplied by 1. So that's how I turned my fractions into numbers. Averages. The most common one that we use in accounting is actually the mean, which represents a typical value for all the numbers. How do we get to that? Let's have the average sales per month for these figures. Bearing in mind, in this sort of uh, average, you can't have half a sale. You either make a sale or you don't. So here are sales for each month of the year. The first thing we're going to do is total them all so we know what the total sales were. And the second thing is to work out what the average was. I divided the total sales by the number of months. In other words, I divided 2758 by 12 because there are 12 months in the year. That ends our session on introducing a little bit of maths to your accounting, brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information, look us up on Facebook, where you can find us at parkbenchtutors.com.